in a world becoming more and more dependent on technology, access to cheap energy has become essential to the functioning of modern economies. However, the uneven distribution of energy supplies among countries has led to significant vulnerabilities. We need oil for almost everything. For every calorie of food produced in the industrial world, 10 calories of oil and gas energy are invested in the forms of fertilizer, pesticide, packaging, transportation, and running of farm equipment. Without an adequate supply of liquid fuels, we could not access health services. Most businesses could not operate and our personal and public transport systems could not function. As the world's ninth largest energy producer, Australia has abundant renewable and non-renewable energy resources. Despite these resources, we are heavily dependent on imports of refined petroleum products and crude oil. We currently import 85% of our crude oil supply and our import dependency has increased over recent years. With only 71 days of oil reserves available in Australia, any major interruption to the supply chain would significantly impact our way of life. Australia basically only produces 10 to 20 percent of our own domestic fuel requirements and the rest of that is being imported. So we really need to get on the wagon of uh, finding solutions to that rather than uh, spending billions of dollars on imported oil. Australia imports most of its refined petroleum products from Singapore, which depends on the Middle East for more than 80% of its supplies. Political instability or conflict in the Middle East would have detrimental effects on Australia's energy security, and it's not unheard of. In the 1970s, the Arab oil embargo saw the price of oil quadruple within the year. During this time, fuel rations and strict speed limits were put in place to limit the amount of petrol consumed by individuals. Oil price increases have overwhelming effects on the economy and direct correlations have been drawn between rises in oil price and the economic recessions. Australians can do something to improve our fuel security. One way to reduce our national liquid fuel demand is by adopting measures around fuel efficiency, public transport and alternative fuels. Australia needs uh, research and development into different uh, biofuel feedstocks and uh, we are now, the economy is transitioning from a fossil fuel economy to a renewable energy economy and uh, we're part of that journey. Pangamia pinata is one tree being considered as a feedstock for the renewable energy industry. I visualise the a longevity with Pongamia where you can become self-sufficient and therefore bypass a lot of these problems that we have with fuel and fuel pricing and those dilemmas. So it's all manageable but of course you need to have some financial backing and that's often in the hands of government and elders. At the end of the day, it all comes down to money. The economics are a big issue. Um, so although I think a lot of the public is very green and, and will adopt sustainable measures, um, only to, to a point uh, in terms of what it's going to cost them. We're very early in the technology development for a lot of these, these fuels and these technologies and the cost will come down over time but we're not quite there yet. Um, in an ideal world, the technology should be able to stand on its own two feet economically um, and be strong and be cheap um, and, and compete with, with oil. But uh, uh, we're not there now, so if we do want to uptake now, it's going to need... Today, with likely assumptions, uh, we wouldn't be able to compete with oil. Uh, but most biofuels actually suffer from that uh, limitation. Um, if the price of oil goes up and then you have a uh, you know, higher margin to be able to produce your biofuel, or the cost of production goes down due to technology, to, due to getting more information and so on, uh, then you will end up with a profitable process. 
the message we keep hearing is biofuels won't work until they match the price of oil. But just think about the opportunity we have here with crops like Pongamia to secure our own fuel supply and produce our own local source of oil. Any farmer can, can grow enough Pongamia trees that can generate enough oil to run his own farm equipment. It can also provide enough energy to run small towns. It can run factories, it can run off-grid power stations. And the beauty is that we don't have to import oil from the Middle East, bring it through our ports and then put it on a truck, take it 1,000 kilometres or 500 kilometres inland. It can all be produced locally and we can create jobs locally. We can create technology locally. We can uh, educate people uh, locally. I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity. A lot of these technologies, um, you know, new plant varieties, new crops, take a long time to prove their value and prove their economic. Um, like a tree, for example, you know, it, it takes a number of years to grow to maturity to really know how much it can produce. So this research does take a long time. We need to be doing a lot now at the research level, developing a lot of different technologies. Um, and, and by doing that, then it is going to be in the 2020s and the 2030s that we start to see biofuels coming through. There is a growing need. Uh, I, I think that uh, Australian oil production in Bass Strait and Northwest Shelf and so on are going down. Australia is importing more and more crude oil, so therefore there is a need to have your local production. And my personal wish, my personal vision, and maybe I will be dead in, you know, in 15 years or so, is that um, if we can uh, replace or substitute about 25% of the energy demand in Australia, this Pongania produced energy, then I will be totally happy. So therefore, there is a place for solar panels and wind farms and nuclear energy and, and you know, whatever, right? Uh, but Pongamia will be part of that. And if it's like at that level 20%, we will have done great. We have an opportunity here with Pongamia to do something and take charge of our future once more. Will you join us? <laughs>